below this uh, below the chat. Oh my god! <laughs> Hi there, and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you the starter tools that you'll need if you want to start making sterling silver or gold jewellery. You can also use base metal if you don't want to be buying sterling silver and gold later on. Uh, I'm going to be showing you the basic tools that you need to get started and also going to show you some of the more advanced tools as well. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please just thumbs up just below the stream and subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get started. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to put some links of all the tools that I'm going to list off today just below in the description. I'm going to give you a brief description of what all the tools do. If you have any questions, do just drop a comment in the uh, comments section below or you can just hit me up on any of my social media, I will put that below as well. So let's get started. Pliers. You need a good set of pliers with no grip on the inside, so they need to be nice and smooth all on the inside. The main ones that you need is you need half round pliers, so they have you see there it's got like a half on one side and then it's flat on the other side, that's for bending round curves. You need some um, round nose pliers which are round on both sides, some snipe nose and some just flat pliers. There are also some more that you need but these are the basic four that you could really do with having first. Some shears, so these are my quite new shears that I've got, just a nice red handle, nice comfortable uh, and these are going to be basically for cutting like your solder and any metal that's thin enough to cut with your shears or tin snips as they're also called the shears steel block so this is just my little tiny steel block that I got in a set uh, not completely necessary although you, you probably should get one as soon as you can um, it's just a steel flat top where you can just basically hammer without denting your like bench or it's just a hard surface that you can form your metal it's very useful to have so a steel block a torch I have two of these torches, basically they're just little small like creme brulee torches, um, just butane filled, you can just easily get gas refilled. I've got one just over here from Maplin's, I don't know, you can get them from B&Q and everything, just a butane refill. I actually need to get some more. These are for your soldering, so you're definitely going to need to get one of these. If you have like a plumber's torch or something, which are quite a lot bigger, or if you have a proper torch already then that's perfect. I don't have one of those yet, I use these torches and they're amazing. You need a soldering block. So basically when you're soldering you don't want to be uh, catching a bench on fire or doing anything crazy like that. So you need to solder on something. So this is the surface that you solder on. I have two of these. I'm not really sure exactly what they're made of. I know this is like a, um, not asbestos, it's like a replacement for asbestos. So it's just a fireproof material. Um, they're amazing. You definitely need to get one of these. This is going to be in one of the kits that I'm going to link just below. A file. So I have a half round file, this is like the only one that I use, the big ones anyway, um, because you've got it for your flat, you've got it for your round, it is amazing. I also have a flat one, but I haven't used that in a long time, I haven't really felt the need. I guess if you're doing a lot bigger pieces than what I usually do, then you might need it, but this is my half round uh, file with a wooden handle. A lot of these come um, just with like the top and then the handle, or some of them don't even come with a handle, that's basically because a lot of the time you need to put them onto the handle. Um, individually so that might be why you just see the top of it like that and you can't see the handle so don't worry because it's easy to do. You could do with a couple of hammers. So we have a rawhide mallet here, this is the one that I use most of all and then I have just a steel one here. I have a few other hammers as well but really you only really need a steel one and a rawhide or even a nylon mallet because you can get actually uh, double sided ones so you can get like um, brass I believe on one side and then it's nylon on one side, they're really good, they're combination hammers, they are definitely really good, um, I'll link that below as well so you can see. The hammers, for hammering, you are going to need a saw frame, this is my saw frame so it's extendable basically so you can tighten it and move it around. Um, you just put the saw blades in here, just like this, they just slide in really easily. Um, I think this is going to be the one that's in the set that I put below anyway. And you also need some different saw blades, so you can get saw blades that are all different sizes. Also, your bench pin. This is like the most important thing um, that you need. So basically, I'll show you because I can take mine off. This is the bench pin, it's basically just a piece of wood that you put on your workbench or your desk or whatever you're starting off with. Um, and you basically hold your pieces against it whilst you're working on it. So if you can imagine, I can't, I can't saw on here. Like if I was just going to do it on here, it's just not possible because you'll cut into the bench, you'll cut yourself, you'll slide all over the place. So a bench pin or bench peg, very important. Need one of these. This is the first on your list. A center punch and some dividers. 
you definitely need these if you're going to be cutting out uh, some pieces from like the center of things or like the inside where you don't want to cut from the outside in um, a good example would be this pendant I'm working on right now I have to use my center punch to get in between these bits without breaking this outer circle um, and the dividers basically you'll use that if you want to make a circle or if you want to just um, mark out how thick you want a piece of metal for a bezel on a stone setting or something like that these two definitely very important a good set of needle files. These are amazing, I use these so much. Every jeweler uses their needle files so much. Basically, they're just little mini files. Um, I have quite a few different ones here. I have um, an oval, I have a triangle, I have a safety file, I have flat, I have a half round, square, round, and a half round as well, if I didn't say that already. These are amazing. These are basically so that you can get in between little bits that you want to file and smooth off after you've sawn it. Um, they're amazing. You definitely need to get yourself a set of these. Um, I think you'll get just the basic ones anyway in um, in the link just below that I'm going to put of where you can buy them from. So yeah, needle files. Moving on to soldering. So you'll need to get some solder. Uh, you can get hard, medium, easy or extra easy solder. Basically that means that you can, uh, you can solder things at different temperatures. So for example, hard solder will melt at a much higher temperature than extra easy solder. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're soldering bits with a lot of bits that are soldered on, if that makes sense. I tend to use hard solder most of all and then I use easy solder or medium towards the end if I even need to. Hard solder has the most silver content and it basically means that it will not tarnish as fast as these ones. It's only a small amount that you use anyway, but you'll notice over time. So hard solder, easy and medium, that's what I have here. So you can just do with hard solder to begin with if you're not doing too complex stuff. This is a ring clamp, so these are very, very handy. Basically, uh, you use these, you put your little piece in the end here, and then you close it up with your piece, and then you wedge it closed with this little wedge we've got here. I've got a little bit of uh, goop in there that I need to take off. Um, but you will pop that in there, and hammer, well, I just sort of whack it on the side of my workbench just to make sure it's extra tight in there. You can hold it against your bench pin like this, and then you have the ease of not cutting your fingers or filing away your fingers whilst you're um, filing or sawing or polishing. It just makes things a lot easier, so definitely you need one of these. You need all of the things here. I don't know why I'm saying that after every time. You need all of this stuff. All of it. <laughs> it's great, you need one. <laughs> now on to buffing. So basically you need some buff sticks. Uh, I have these ones here, they're quite flimsy. They're pretty good. Um, usually the buff sticks are just wooden sticks with sandpaper wrapped around them. Uh, they're different grits, so basically you can get different smoothness. It's basically so after you've filed, um, it gets all nice and smooth and you can get it to a really, really nice finish just before polishing. So these are very, very important. Um, also, you can just use some sandpaper. Um, so I have, this is like a sponge sandpaper that I have here. So this is a, a hundred grit here, um, so it's pretty coarse. But I have like a whole set of these. I will also put the link of this below because I think that everyone should get some of this. It's amazing. It, it just, you can, if you're doing a curve, you can just, with ease, just go along it and uh, make it really nice, a really nice texture, really smoothed off. It's amazing stuff. Sandpaper and buff sticks. A couple of steel mandrels. So I have this ringed mandrel here, which basically it has all the UK sizes down here. This is for making rings. So you can hammer on it, it's steel, uh, it's pretty hardy. You can do a lot of things with it. You could put hot melt on it if you wanted. Um, but basically, when you're making a ring, this is a amazing piece of kit. You definitely need one of these if you're gonna be making rings. So pop this on your list if you want to be a ring maker. Here's a normal sized one. And then I also have a smaller one. So this is usually, I use this for um, jump rings I'm making if I need to, if I'm sort of bending them round like that, or um, mostly if I'm making stone settings. So to make things nice and round, I have this small one here. So there's that one and the bigger one. Some flux and a paintbrush. So I have an old makeup brush here that I use. Um, but here's my flux. This is basically a liquid that will stop oxides forming when you're soldering. So you know, uh, if you've soldered before like this with the torch, the metal will go a little bit of a funny color. It'll go like a rusty kind of, uh, like a brownish and black and uh, basically it'll go all black and horrible when you're soldering. This, you put it on um, just as you're, just look before you're gonna start soldering and it, it's like a form of glass when it gets to a certain temperature. So it basically, it keeps it nice and clean for when you're soldering and it lets the solder flow where you want it to join. So there's the flux and you apply it with a paintbrush or a solder pick. I learned how to do it at university with a paintbrush but I know I really should be using a solder pick but don't worry too much about that. A paintbrush is fine <laughs> or a makeup brush as long as it's clean. 
So another thing you're going to need if you're doing some soldering is some pickle. So basically it's kind of like a very mild acid that eats away the non-ferrous metals. So um, basically if you've got your oxidisation after you've soldered all that black horrible rubbish, this is what's going to eat it off. Basically you just mix with this one uh, and only this one. If you're not getting this one then don't do this obviously. It's just read the label on whatever you're using. Uh, but this is like, uh, I'll actually read out. So this is 200 milliliters of hot water into a heat proof container. Dissolve one tablespoon of uh, pickling, insert your pieces and leave for 10 minutes or however long you need to leave it in there. Um, make sure that no steel gets into your pickle or any other metals basically. If you're using sterling silver, only put sterling silver in there. Um, that also counts if you're using steel tweezers. Get some plastic tweezers or something. Uh, something else so that you're not putting steel into your pickle because if you do it'll become a nice shade of pink and your jewellery will be pink and it'll be a little bit difficult to get it off so yeah your pickle to clean up your jewellery after it's been soldered also just to add if you want to be a little bit more precise with things which is definitely a good idea especially with jewellery um you'll want to get yourself a vernier gauge uh, i'm not sure where mine is uh, mine's disappeared but a vernier gauge is basically uh, one of those tools that you use you can get like a, uh, a one with a little uh, screen on it or you can just get like a manual one uh, basically just tells you the millimeters of the thickness of things that you're using and and whatnot um, but you can also just use a ruler it's not as precise uh, so I would definitely get a vernier gauge if you can Okay, so those are the basic tools that you need to get started. If I've missed anything out, I do apologise, I'll put it in the description below anyway. I'll go through it a million times just to make sure that I've not missed anything out. And if I do, it'll be just below that, or I'll probably even just like put it as a tag like right here if I've missed anything. If there's nothing here, that means I've done well and I haven't missed anything out. Um, so basically, I'm going to run you through some things that you could do with, but you don't necessarily need them to start making jewellery. Things like um, the things you need to polish, um, just bits that'll make your job a lot easier. So don't worry too much if you can't get these things just yet. The things that I've just listed uh, are all you really need to get started, depending on what you want to make. Um, okay, so let's get started on those. So the biggest one is, and basically you'll really need one of these if you want to start getting things really, really shiny, uh, if you don't want to get like a desktop polisher anyway, it's just, it's a very useful thing to have. You could do with getting a, um, a Fordham or a, um, a Dremel, um, basically it's a pendant motor, so I'll show you mine the flex shaft here, you can't actually see the motor, but here it is. So basically it's a flex shaft, so you put your birds in the end here, if I show you if it's going to focus. Put the birds in the end there, you can uh, change them as really quickly interchangeable if you have a flex shaft like this one. Um, basically you have a lot of tools that you can use this with. So I'll show you all of my birds that I have at the minute. So these are just sort of my uh, my cutting birds that I have. So I have like some stone setting birds, I don't know if you can see that, it's not focusing on you right now, there we are. So these are the like stone setting birds and ball birds and um, cut birds and my drill bit, you definitely need a drill bit. I cannot stress enough how much you'll need a drill bit, especially if you want to be doing, like I said earlier, with the little bits that you need to cut out, you need a drill bit. Um, if you don't have a drill bit, um, I guess maybe if someone in the family has a, like one of those um, mechanical, like the big drills, and you could use one of them if, you're, uh, if your drill will fit in there. You just need to make sure that all of these will basically fit whatever you're using. So if you have like a, a Dremel that's not that expensive, or if you have like a top of the range one, just make sure that all your burrs are gonna fit. So I believe these are three or four millimeters um, in width. So these are some of my cutting burrs. And then we have some of the other burrs. <laughs> so these are things like polishing burrs, uh, there's some grinding burrs, uh, burnishing, all sorts of things in here. <clears throat> um, you have like these fluffy ones to create a really uh, fine polish. Um, I'll show you the uh, polishing compound in a minute. I've got a few other drill bits here. Um, you can just see some of these here. I'll post a link to some of these below just in case you uh, do have a Fordham or a Dremel or some sort of pendant motor already. Or if you're looking at getting one, I will definitely post all the information just below on all these as well because it's an amazing piece of kit. And I don't think like you. Um, unless you have like a, a desktop polisher, you can't really make things super shiny without one. So that's what I use mine mostly for, as well as a lot of other jobs, as you can see. Whee! If you do have a desktop polisher, or if you do have a Dremel or a Fordham or some sort of pendant motor, you'll need some polishing compound. So I have my Tripoli here, which is a massive block, which I'm never going to run out of, I swear, it's massive. Um, you just, you buy one and you've got it forever, basically. <laughs> and I also have this one here, it's, um, I'm not actually sure the name of this because I've had it quite a while and I've like ripped off the label. 
but uh, this is amazing. This is for gold and silver. Basically, this is a final polish. So uh, you'll use your um, polishing burrs. The first one on here with a little bit of a coarser polishing, not coarse, but like a cotton burr or something. And then you'll use like a really fluffy cotton one for this one, which is a final polish, which makes things super, super shiny. So if you want to get a really shiny finish, like a uh, mirrored finish, then you will need some polishing compound and a desktop polisher or a pendant motor. So also, if you don't know, I do stream on Twitch TV and the creative section. I'm partnered over there, over at twitch.tv forward slash Elvin Amy. I'll put the link below anyway. But what I wanted to say is basically a lot of the people there have asked me what the um, starter piece of jewelry is. Like if you want to start making jewelry, what should you start with? So uh, I would say, Start off with some saw piercing, get used to saw piercing and little simple bits of soldering. So maybe a pendant or like a really simple ring. Uh, you can use a ring, you could like make a ring out of wire or out of sheet with your mandrel and your hammers and all those sorts of things. Um, I'll be posting some more videos on tutorials, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube, a lot of really helpful people. Um, so I would recommend people make like maybe a simple pendant, so if you're gonna... Uh, maybe trace on a design on a piece of silver, so like on a sheet of paper and then, um, a sheet of paper and then trace it onto the piece of metal, I mean. And then just cut that out. Once you've cut it out, then you can just, you know, solder on a bale and then hang it from a chain and that's it. After you've cleaned it up, like buffed up and everything, I think that that would be a really good thing to start with. Or a ring, you could just, you could just make a really simple ring. Like there's so, so many tutorials and I'll probably do my own as well. I know that I have done a tutorial on how to make like a, a Swiss Blue Topaz cocktail ring and that is just below. I'll put the link like here. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions about that, just just ask, just ask me, ask any other people on YouTube. I'm sure that they'll come to you really fast and I will try and reply to you ASAP, like pretty fast. So if you do have questions, just let me know. One question I was also asked by my friend is, what do you do if you don't have a pendant motor? Um, so basically, if you don't have a pendant motor or a pendant drill, or you don't have a Dremel, you can, you'll struggle a little bit to get things to a fine shine, but there are ways that you can sort of almost get to that mirrored uh, finish. Uh, so you can get some really, really fine sandpaper, all those sponge sandpapers that I showed you before get really really fine and then you could get like almost like a paper grit like really really soft maybe put some polishing compound on there it just means that you'll be rubbing it a little bit um, for a while maybe not it depends but you can get that to a nice uh, finish like that also what an amazing thing that I found is uh, my friend got me a nail buffer uh, for a Christmas present once and basically it's like a really small battery powered motor that buffs away your nail um, if you have a look on like eBay, maybe I'll have a look and post them below um, if I can find any that are suitable. If not, just, ha just have a look. I'm sure you'll find some amazing ones. Um, make sure it's got a little bit of torque to it if you can, but uh, they just basically spin around. They're handheld ones. They're not going to be amazing because the torque is always going to be a little bit low on those, um, unless you get some that are sort of like a little bit more expensive, a little bit more torque. I also just wanted to show you some of the materials that I use. So basically, this is a bunch of silver wire that I've got here in different gauges. So we have sort of like three millimeters and 0.8 millimeters. I think uh, if you're gonna start off, I would recommend maybe getting some 0.8 millimeters. Um, and it depends what you're making, but we use a lot of 0.8 millimeter at university. So that was a good one to start with. Uh, and of course your sheet metal as well. So this is 0.5 millimeters. It's a little bit blue on that side because it's still got the film on it. But yeah, this is what I cut away from. I've got um, some different gauges of this as well, but yeah. This point five to start off with making uh, like mm, some. If you're gonna do rings, I maybe recommend using wire depending on your design. If it's a lot thicker, then you'll want to use a thicker sheet. Um, pendants. It really depends on your design. If you're gonna form it, uh, you know, maybe start off. If you're gonna do some saw piercing, maybe start off on like 0 0.8 to 1.5 millimeters. Uh, just because it'll be not so difficult to cut that away and it'll still be comfortable around the neck or whatever it is you're making. If you are looking at my workbench and thinking, I like, can't get one of these workbenches right now, don't even, like, don't even worry about it. I worked on a desk, just like a, it was like a £10 desk that I got from a charity shop and all I did was get, um, it's actually in here, I'll just grab it for you, it's my old bench pin. So I just attached this to the G-clamp onto my old desk that I had, make sure it's not too thick, the desk, so that you can't get a G-clamp in there. 
um, because obviously this would not fit with a G clamp unless it was massive. And so we come to the end of the video. I hope it was really, really helpful for you. I hope that you found all the information that you were looking for. If you didn't and you still have some questions, please do just feel free to post below in the comments. I'll get back to you ASAP. Um, and also on my social media just below, as I said. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you enjoyed it and you want to see some more. Um, if you think I'm a crazy and you want to see how crazy I am, just, just subscribe, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!